So I'm excited today to just talk and share about the 2022 growing season. And the things that happen on our own farm, and of course we're here in central Illinois, and we are really blessed of a great year. At the same time, we also understand there's things that you and I can do that we in our management system, and every year is a learning year. And this we know, that it never stays the same, and it always changes. When I think about the growing season that we had here in 2022, without question for me, number one, is just good plant count. We're talking about in these cornfields that we came out in, whether we were dropping 33,000, 36,000, everything worked out really well. When I say plant count, it starts with even emergence. And so due to, we had dry soils that had the right amount of moisture, and then we got some really warm temperatures. And that drove where we had seeds emerging within that 12 to 24 hour window. And that to me is the sweet spot. I get really nervous when we talk about 48 hours being the max that I would have one of these seedlings starting to emerge where this other guy is already maybe has one collar on it. And so plant count started it. And then of course that translated into high ear count. So in other words, where every plant was putting on an ear. And so when we talk about high ear count, I'd like to see us be if in one ear, you know, if we say we dropped 33,000, I'd like to see in a thousandth of an acre to have 32,000 ears or 32 ears. We were so fortunate this year with warm 65 degree soils and good moisture. We didn't see the problem that we normally see that robs us of ear count on spiked down seeds. Depending on how that seed is positioned, the seed trance, spike can be up or down. And when the spike has to circle that seed to get out, it puts that plant behind and creates a barren plant. Where those 65 to 70 degree soils due to the 90 plus air temps really sped up the growth and took away that effect of the spike down seed. One of the other real advantages of planting the warm 65 degree soils versus 50 degree soils is that corn seed with the poor saturated cold germ scores really didn't have a problem getting out in a timely manner. And so that goes all the way through from emergence into V5 and higher is where as that plant grows is where this comes from. And so a high ear count with this, and that drove for me, when we look at this central Illinois seat area, and number two is fence row to fence row. In other words, from fence row to fence row, we had excellent yields. There was no bad spots up in that field. And so when we see that kind of a year, you realize yields are gonna be high. It doesn't take much for those of us run combines, you see a yield monitor and you have a two acre bad spot or a drowned out spot. It just drives you crazy, don't you? And you see how fast the yield, as far as the field average drops when you get into those areas. And this really begs the question we prove, we talk all the time about tile how important field tile is into your operation, whether that's pattern or whether you go in and get those low spots drained. And I think for me, this is a proof that we need it. And we talk about, you know, an eight year payback. It's very common for us to spend what? At least, you know, at times it would get up to what? $1,000 an acre to put in a pattern tile program. And there's always that question say, well, how soon will it pay back? And does it pay? This year's proof to me. When we see the kind of growing season we had without those mega rains, when I'm talking about a three to four to five inch rain event, and that's where in the field you start to see these different areas, and when you come through with the combine, they're gonna be in there and you're gonna have low plant count, poor ear count, and the yield to drop. It's not uncommon in a half mile row, in a lot of years you'll see what, a hundred bushel difference? You'll see 285 to 185 on a yield monitor in one pass. That didn't happen this year. Look at the field that's come up here on the screen and you can see in this field, a field that went over 275 as a whole field. Yes, in the center you'll see you've got some power, high power line towers and you can see where the combine is going around that. But when you realize from fence row to fence row that 275 to 285, that's what we're referring to here. And this year's rainfall resembled a year that you would have good drainage and tile. So yes, maybe this year you wouldn't have needed tile. So what is that? 
one year out of 15. But the rest of the years we say, let's, how do you and I solve these problems? And it comes down that we were just blessed with some really good conditions. What goes follows that, we talk about high ear count. You know, we got the high ear count. And what follows that, of course, then is nitrogen management. How do you and I satisfy if we're really going to have an ear on every plant? And I like to have those ears on the seventh node from the top. And so we started out really strong. And so at that V5 stage, we satisfied everything. And so we had lots of rows around. In other words, as we looked at that ear, and we looked at that ear, we were able to get a lot of these kernels around that ear. And so we had a lot of 18s in the field. And we no longer had to worry about, because of the good start and the fact that at V5, we had the correct amount of nitrogen. And we didn't put that plant under stress. We didn't turn roots because of uh, tillage issues. And we no longer had to worry about it. It started out at 18 and went to 16 and scrambled here at the butt. And so, and we finished strong. And nitrogen management, you and I can always tell, it starts early. And so for us at 360, we talk all the time about, well, that's why we put the bandit on the planters. And so we're gonna come out with the planter. We're gonna apply nitrogen, we're out of planting time, and we're gonna help this V5 stage to have really happy corn. And we're gonna do the right type of, of tillage so that we're not turning roots and we're gonna satisfy early in this plant's life and this is when this happens. This is eight inch high corn is when we're selecting how many rows around we're gonna be. Then it comes into what I call mid-season. In the mid-season time, nitrogen is a huge question mark for you and I. How did the year go? How has the growing season been up to July 4th? And from July 4th into the last week of July, do we have enough nitrogen to finish the race? And here in central Illinois, we saw what? We saw kernels that were 38 and 40 long. And that's rare. We know a lot of times we'll pollinate 44 long. We'll pollinate 44 long, but we can't hang on to it. Due to environment, and due to nitrogen management. And so for us, we never count on a once and done finishing the race. And so we're always coming in in that mid-season time, and that's why the Y drop fits so well into Greg's program. And with a soil scan, I can come in and monitor. We can take the 12-inch core, and we can see exactly what it is because we realize every one of these kernels in length is worth six bushel to you. We talk about it all the time. And so how do we hang on to what we pollinated? Can we maintain and keep an ear that's 40 long? And this year it worked out due to the correct rainfall, due to understanding what an ear needs. And what we're really missing here is mineralization. And so when you get into this kind of a year, and these little guys are happy, and they're creating the free nitrogen, and that's what happened in central Illinois. Yes, we started really strong with good plant count, even emergence. We had high ear count, and then we took care of the main driver of yield in nitrogen. And we closed really strong. And what I mean by a strong close, I'm talking about when you and I create good kernel depth. In other words, we come in here and we have tremendous depth of kernel. 20, 30 bushel added on this year. When you looked at the field we just showed you with the yield map and you see 275, 285, you realize normal years that field's in the 245 to 255. Where did that extra 30 bushel come from? It come from a really phenomenal growing season with a really strong close. And this kernel depth is real. The size of that kernel made all the difference. So we talk about the top six things that drove 2022. What would be number four? Well, for me, number four is something that I've thought a lot about. And that's how you and I 
create plant health in 23 and in 2024 coming up the next two years how does greg duplicate what i saw this year unbelievable stay green and plant health we come out of 2021 and on everybody's lips were the words tar spot and we realize how dangerous it could be I've heard of it for years of my many good customers that I have the opportunity to work with and they'd say Greg do we have, have you ever had tar spot I said no we've seen just a little bit of it but it really is not a factor and then in 2021 it hit us with a vengeance here throughout this tri-county area and it dramatically lowered yields it's a savage disease and what scares me is I don't have anything in my toolbox that it's a check mark that I can say I'm not worried about this I can get it with two passes of fungicide or this particular product right now there's nothing out in the industry and as I talked with the corn breeders themselves it's going to take some time now there's definitely genetics that are more friendly that can handle this but when I think about the plant health that we had this year why after this did it come and it's all about timely rains I'm talking where we had a third of an inch a half inch three quarters of an inch whenever we needed them the good Lord blessed our operation and we had that what didn't we have we didn't have a really wet in a in a plant environment when you go in the field at 11 o'clock and 12 o'clock you know at noon plants aren't still wet we took and lowered all the moisture and humidity because we didn't have we didn't have that four inch and five inch I remember back in 23 I had a six inch rain event and we saturated those soils and that disease was in the perfect growing environment sure we had gray leaf and you know and we had northern no question in 21 and we had some rust but those were good host sites for tar spot just to destroy the plant so we come in this year you couldn't hardly find gray leaf couldn't find northern very little rust this was non-existent in 2022 and i'm so thankful and so it just shows what the environment can be now you realize a lot of us have pivots and so in high yielding corn we have a pivot that comes across the top and what do we give it you know anywhere from I'd say most guys are going to do a half inch and some some are running an inch what happens if we come in at let's just say 2 p.m. in the afternoon and we're running that pivot through that field and all of a sudden we create a moist wet environment that this gets really excited about and without question that starts to increase the disease pressure the 360 rain fits into this environment really well let me just turn the page here I'm out of room so we come in at 360 rain and we're watering where we're watering down here at the ground at the base of the plant so we have all this leaf structure hanging out here of course we got a big old ear hanging in here as we go at that but we're creating the watering event down here at what four tenths per week so we come in at four tenths per week and duplicating exactly what we had you know in 2022 we're able to do that so adding water nature's water this year for us was in the perfect timing segment and it really made a difference number five for me I call it harvest heaven and that's where we come in and we just had timing was everything and we had perfect conditions we talk about soil conditions it, it was there was no mud and so I'm so thankful we didn't have any we did not cut tracks in cornfields in other words setting it up for a problem the following spring and so when we came in and I'll, I'll agree we traded grain carts for the first time in probably 12 to 14 years we've had two track carts and so there was quite a discussion amongst us our farm team what should we do of course dad's saying I think we ought to have one cart with tracks because I can remember some really tough harvest conditions 
And so I was on, outvoted by the boys and everybody said, no, let's just go with the super floater tires and it'll be fine, Dad. It'll work. And it did. Well, I would imagine that in the next five years, Dad's probably going to be right. We're going to wish we had at least one track cart. But the soil that we left coming into next year is in perfect conditions due to a dry harvest. But was there challenges? Sure. When we talk about stay green corn, I want to be careful here. We run S series combines. But the stay green, where I'm talking, it looks like silage corn, and we're cutting what? 23 to 21% corn? Really high yields, well over 280. And so, what are we doing? That combines, you know, it's down to a crawl. We're slowing up because of what? Keeping corn in the back of that machine. And here's Greg's face when we slowed down. Why is Greg still smiling? Because the yields are through the roof. And so I don't have a problem slowing down a little bit and giving it time to get every kernel that we possibly can into the grain tank. And so I like the conditions that we set up. So 2023, we're in a really good spot. Following right up after harvest, and this will be my last one, we know we come in and we had ideal conditions to put cover crops, and I call it the perfect tillage scenario where we had soil that was just dry enough where it really fractured, but not so dry that you couldn't, you know, that you couldn't pull it. So we got these done correctly. We got tillage done correctly. We know that with these kind of conditions and it, and it lingered on. We had a timely harvest. So then we had the opportunity to come in and we have waterway work. And all of you have this. Every farm has this kind of thing. You know, and what we call the dirt work, you know, the dirt work, where we come in with the scrapers and the pans and the, and the dozer and the blades, and, and we get this done in timely fashion. You know, I get on my soapbox a lot about plant count and ear count and nitrogen management. And this is a year that we had things just work out almost ideal perfect for us. And we saw what timely rains would do. We saw what no disease pressure looks like and the kind of genetics you and I have at our disposal. And it's ex super exciting when we see the kind of ROI we're able to generate out of some of our farms. And so I am now saying, what else is in the toolbox from 360? And so we're going to talk about 360 rain. What is has proven to me, the rainfall that we had this year in low amounts, cements for me the value of 360 rain where we come in and we do that you know four tenths to a half inch of water a week and we saw what kind of response that we had in yield and i can see and predict for you the kind of response we're going to get in the future with this kind of technology we're going to duplicate what we had in 2022 in our fields and your fields in 2023 and 2024. Let's jump in and let's talk about what does the future look like with a product like 360 Ring.